Okay, so I have played Super Mario Sunshine before. The last time I did a full playthrough of this game was 18 years ago. In 2002, I was 15 years old. So I'm not listing this as a blind playthrough on YouTube, but it's an amnesia playthrough. It's been so long I forget basically everything from it. We did start this game during a 24-hour Mario stream five years ago. Uh, but it's been so long since I last played it, it's now 2020 that I'm just going to be starting over. I'm going to unlist that original VOD. If you wanted to see my reaction to the game as part of a 24-hour Mario stream, you can look in the description of this video. There will be a link to that episode. But otherwise, we're just going to start from scratch here. I know, right? Some of the other Mario games that we started, I'll just pick up where we left off, but I think this one will benefit more for me starting over. We also had some technical difficulties during that stream. Um, had a Comcast outage right in the middle of Mario Sunshine. <sighs> I am playing this on the Dolphin emulator. As of today, this game can only be played in the original GameCube. Um, I do own a GameCube and a Frame Meister, but I don't have a $158 used copy of Mario Sunshine, so... My understanding is that the emulator is pretty, uh... Pretty compatible with this particular game. <laughs> Comcast never changes, I know, right? That was California Comcast, too. Rumble on, subtitles on. Looks good. Starts. I'm pretty sure I 100%ed this game 18 years ago, but we're not going to be doing that now. We're just going to try to beat it. Check out as many levels as possible. Death, taxes, and Comcast being shit. What happened? I do remember the artifacting in the cutscene, right? Because this is recorded video instead of in-game. It's really sharp. It's probably even sharper coming through the stream. Now, now, boys, don't touch that stuff. Nani the heck? most concerned with the well-being of the princess in this dreadful heat. Master Mario, if you would, cross over to that shore and find some assistance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mario not talking when everyone else does. <laughs> Bad feeling about this. I really like the look of GameCube games. Yeah, I loved it in Mario RPG, absolutely. Where you did the, um... The charades, basically, right? A small audio hiccup a second ago. It made me a little bit nervous about using this in Dolphin. Preparing to register customer information, scanning and classifying subject data. Subject identified as Mario, resident of the Mushroom Kingdom. Data storage complete. What is such a weird idea? Ultra dousing device. I hope to be of assistance. No, it's just that the. Uh... Use the R All of these cutscenes in Super Mario Sunshine have video artifacting in them because they're not an engine. The That's why it looks kind of icky. You can then use the to aim in any this would have looked pretty good on a CRT. The hover nozzle. You can then press the R button to hover in the air for a short time. If this tank is empty, no water can be sprayed. To re 
fuel tank, enter a body of water, and press the R button. Instructions complete. Proceed. Ooh. Alright, washing off that M to test your skills. This game had an Ultra HD textures for Dolphin, which I didn't pick up, obviously, because we try to play the games in their original form as much as possible. That seems kind of cool. The game itself is gorgeous. I feel like the GameCube, towards the end of the GameCube, was right around the time Nintendo started focusing on these heavy front-loaded tutorials and cutscenes. There weren't that many GameCube titles, let alone first-party titles, right? It's one of my favorite consoles, though, in terms of the look of the games on it, the fact that most games ran at 60 FPS. Mario Sunshine does not, interestingly Mario enough. Now in session. As you are no doubt aware, I love the controller. Have been senselessly defacing Fair Isle Delfino using some paint -like Speedrunners just agree to start after the, the intro. Interesting. With polluting our beautiful home, and yes, endangering our very way of life. Indeed, how can one not be aware of what is going on? So it is daytime in Delfino. I don't Plaza, remember these long cutscenes at all. Beneath the veil of darkness. Expert shine scholars Even from playing it five years ago for that 24 hour stream. Because all of our guardians, the shine sprites, have vanished. From Compare this to Mario 64. Hey, I've got cake in the castle. Bye. It's quite obvious. This horrible graffiti is to blame. Behold this sketch of the perpetrator based on eyewitness descriptions. The truth is obvious. I was the weird English him. text on that it poster on the side there. Mario. It wasn't real oh, words. Oh, I judge the defendant guilty as charged. I hereby order the defendant to clean this entire island. Until Isle Delfino is completely free of his vile handiwork, Mario shall not be allowed to leave. Court adjourned. This appears to be quite a predicament, Mario. Data analysis verifies that the island's inhabitants are indeed troubled by pollution, but the pollution itself is not the main problem. Mario, you witnessed this object at the airstrip, correct? It is a shine sprite. Shine sprites are the <laughs> Sorry, I'm just power on amused Island that they have to explain to me what this is. To gather in great numbers I need to go look at the beginning of Mario Galaxy again. Has polluted the island and most of the Mario Galaxy is, is explained through there a playable no level, right? Power to support the peaceful lifestyle of the islanders. It is most pitiable. It's like Bowser shows up and starts raining crap everywhere. The return of the shine sprites is to keep the island from becoming any dirtier. The perpetrator is likely at work even as we speak. So I do remember who the perpetrator is. Mario are being treated as a criminal. 
Tomorrow we must do our best to resolve the situation. No, I do not want to hear your explanation again. You can't miss the mess now. Your first job's to get rid of all the So speedrunners agree to start after this. Does that mean that uh these aren't skippable? We'll know if you start slacking off. I remember this game having really really great gameplay. My brain must have deleted the cutscenes, right? Wasn't old enough to care about them yet. Yeah, that little white text on the left side of the poster, we saw like a zoomed in higher resolution version of it and it was just like gobbledygook. Yeah, I'm hopeful this game gets an HD remaster. This happened to me with uh, Twilight Princess where like right after I beat Twilight Princess, they announced the remaster of that. probably remaster almost every GameCube game. There aren't that many first-party ones. They're the only ones that aren't available on some form of virtual console after release, right? Yeah, exactly. As soon as I finish this, it'll come out. I'll be like, no! You like hold down R until it clicks. Those are the days, right? Left and right trigger on the uh, Xbox One controller are still analog, but it's not as satisfying as the clicky button on the GameCube controller. I thought the dark sky here was a glitch. I was getting really nervous. Everything I read said that the uh, this game had perfect compatibility with Dolphin. But it's in this cutscene too, which is a pre-rendered video, so. Get him! This game doesn't have a long jump, does it? Because that button is reserved for flood. Do that. water on the ground and then belly flop onto it for speed. Really? I don't know if I ever did that tech as a kid. shouldn't be allowed to use tools like that. No, no, that's cool. wonder if they got this idea from uh, the paintings in Mario 64, which was such a cool idea. 
Bianco Hills, Rogue the Big Windmill. I assume this game just auto saves. Probably whenever you get a shine. Alright, let me try this belly flop into water to gain speed thing. That ability? Oh, that's cool. What's up? Do you not actually want to talk to me? There we go. Trailer connects to the big windmill. That path there teaches you that, yeah. whenever you clean up red graffiti like that. Nice to fix. Steam remains really pretty. Let me try adjusting the uh, saturation a little bit over here, though. Okay. Yeah. Very bright green. I absolutely must save and continue after every single one of those. This is Dolphin, unfortunately. I don't know why I didn't- I don't own this game. I have a shelf that has a ton of GameCube games. I went to go check and I was like, wow, I don't own Mario Sunshine. And it's $150 on Amazon. I must have, like, rented it multiple times. Game came out before I had a job and buy my own games. rented that. I have that GameCube disc that has all of the uh, Zelda games on it. Found it at a secondhand store before every secondhand store was like overrun by people trying to buy stuff to resell on the internet. Cool retro game stores that used to have hidden gems in them and now just have 100 copies of Madden 94. 
because everything good has been bought out by people trying to resell stuff on eBay. Nice. Yeah, smudge there, Mario. Yeah, I used to like him too. I've told this story before about uh, my friend and I. This is probably around 2001, 2002, around when this game came out. We had both rented and beaten Chrono Trigger several times, but didn't own it. We went to a, one of those local mom and pop game stores, and we were talking in the back about Final Fantasy VI because they had it on sale for like 40 bucks or something. I was like, man, 40 bucks, that's a lot. I don't know if I can make that work. And then the guy, this dude came up to us. He was like, guys sound like RPGs. And he like reached into his coat pocket and pulled out Chrono Trigger. And we were both like, oh my god. What are those stories? I can't believe that that's real. It's funny, if you uh, go to Japan, Chrono Trigger is like $7. There's so many copies of that game floating around secondhand stores. In the US, it's really hard to find. I basically picked up all of my dream SNES games on Super Famicom when uh, Andrea had that business trip in Japan. Screw your hover nozzle. Yeah, I haven't. I don't really buy physical games. I had to buy a uh, Ring Fit Adventure physical. You can't even get a digital copy if you have a third party uh, Ring Con. <laughs> no, it's the Japanese version of the game. I know almost all the games that I picked up for the Super Famicom well enough that I don't need it to be in English to play it. I briefly toyed around with the idea of doing... trying to learn Japanese by playing these games and like manually looking stuff up just playing through them, but there's just not time in the schedule for it. Rockman X, you don't need to speak any Japanese to play that. Shut up, Flood. Navi. Mm -hmm. This whole full playthroughs, or mostly blind playthroughs of awesome games thing doesn't work out. Have it in my back pocket as a form of content to do at some point. Oh, that's cool, Akeem. I was going to do Earthbound early on because that's a game that I know super well and is all stylistically in hiragana. Which is pretty cool. You help out with the big-headed creature up there. He's the only one we can ask to lend us a hand. I'll try. <laughs> no, it's fine. Anything PS2 era, I'm trying to buy physical now if I can, because... Emulating it's not really an option. Often it's not available digitally. And I've got the Frame Meister with a PS2 attachment, so I may as well use it. PD Piranha?
So I have a butt pound in the now. Probably could have opened it one there, I'm guessing. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I made it that it's mostly goop that hurts you. The only older games that are super cheap are uh, GBA and DS carts. They just printed a billion of them and it costs nothing for every GameStop to stock a thousand of them, right? They took up no space. And they're super resilient, like your disc can break pretty easily. Or at least become so scratched that it's unplayable. I was gonna do Metroid Fusion on the 3DS, but apparently that was only for the ambassadors. I completely forgot about this, but apparently if you bought the 3DS right when it came out, it had a really underwhelming um, library and there was no reason to own it. So to make it up to the people who owned the 3DS early, they gave them 10 free virtual console games, but then never made those games available for purchase. Fire emblems are so expensive. I don't want to risk bricking my GBA because I've got a capture card on it. Or by GBA, I mean 3DS. Assume there's a shenanigan I can use to get up there early. I keep like instinctively wanting to punch these things. Can you see me switch to the hover flood? That's what's happening. Sweet. Tanookies? Here for that, huh? Ten blue coins needed. You get nothing! Fax, Mendus, Incendium, Gloria Copen. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think this is the level where Comcast died during my 24-hour stream. It was my first 24-hour stream too, so I was super stressed out. 
do it on the ground as well. It's all here black and white. Here is Crystal. You stole fizzy lifting drinks. You bumped into the ceiling, which now needs to be washed and sterilized so you get nothing. Love that movie. That movie is 50 years old. Thank you, Flood. Stay for kids. I don't like that thing that makes it slightly translucent so you can see what's going on in there. Guess you have to have a concentrated stream on them to make sure you don't accidentally unlock a blue coin. That makes sense. Just through like spraying randomly throughout the level, right? Classic. In Mario World. Oops. The movement still feels really good in this game. No. This crap over here. Yeah, I see what you mean. Some of these, some of the graffiti on the ground looks really pixelated on the edges. It's interesting. Maybe there's like an anti-aliasing setting should be on. I'll look into it for next episode. I didn't want to screw around with any of the optional settings too much. Dolphin's one of the more stable emulators out there, but certain games can be finicky. And so let's save points. I remember the water blowing my mind in this game. I think it's some kind of like tricky effect. This is just a really nice looking surface texture. But back in 2002, this looked insanely good. Uh, I'm just gonna try to check out all the levels. Same thing we did for Mario 64. I think all shines is, yeah, blood from a stone. A to surface. or seven shines per level. It's really enough to see all the levels. I'm not going too crazy with it.
I do like that heat effect they tried to add to the background. That's kind of cool. There's a yellow submarine. Oh, I'm just saying that's how I handled Mario 64. It's probably how I'm going to do this one. I don't think it's worth getting all the shines. It's a lot of other games not played. I think I have to climb up one of these. Hold on. I'm gonna head back over to this lighthouse thing over here. All chapter sevens. So you have to get way more than that many shines per stage in order to completely skip a stage. are brutal in this one. I think that's fair. A lot of the stars in Mario 64 are unique content, right, for the level. So if there's any particularly cool shines, I guess let me know. Goodness for shadows and 3D platformers. I'm surprised any percent is as you doing that much. I figured this game would be glitchier than that. Yeah, it's a pretty, it's impressive what a huge uh, quality of life improvement that is for Mario Odyssey, right? I really, 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 really liked Mario Odyssey's approach. Where there's, it's the same as like the Korok seats and Breath of the Wild. There were so many pickups that you could basically play the game in any order and just get the ones that you naturally ran into as you're exploring around. And that would be more than enough to finish the game. No! I didn't hold on to it long enough, apparently. Sadness. All right, there's a limit to how long you can hover. Okay. I was hoping to jump off that thing and then hover under the one and get on the roof of it, but I don't think that's necessary. I guess the downside to having a Korok Seed style progression system is that you make the game miserable to 100%. If you really want to get all the Korok Seeds, you're going to have a bad time. And the only reason to do that is for its own sake, right? It doesn't give you anything that's particularly useful. It's just like, you get like a little golden poop, don't you? Almost making fun of you for having done it. Yeah, you don't want to do anything other than crit path. Does this game still give you things for getting 100 coins? and practicing throwing people in. Blue coins and... Raise the sub by spinning that thing. You don't 
happen to know, do you? Oh god. Why is the talk button the same as the dash off the platform button? I don't have that kind of power yet. I really tried. Go anywhere else that's interesting. It's a set spawn point instead of like near 64 where it spawns in the middle of a slide and you can't get it. Interesting. Right, because the in Mario 64 it just spawns wherever you were when you got 100 coins, right? You need to be down to cross over here. Whew. High stakes for falling here. Looper. You're trash, you know that? That's fine. I can just jump on it in general. Okay. Don't have to ground common. That's interesting. I mean, I feel like it does, it is good to have uh, minor mini goals. Like jumping on top of this fountain is a cool little thing to do and the game should try to reward you for doing it, but it also shouldn't give you a full on star. I guess if this was um, Mario Odyssey, that would just be a star or a moon or whatever. There would just be so many of them and you would need so many of them to progress, right? But I like that even in like Metroidvanias where you try to add some kind of small thing that you're excited about finding, but which isn't a huge deal on its own. Makes it naturally scale really well to different kinds of players. If you're a hardcore player that wants to 100% it, you're gonna have a hard time. If you're just a kid trying to beat it, you'll be able to beat it just by exploring around. I don't think that stars need to be valuable, right? It's mostly just, did you do the thing, right? Did you see the fountain and jump up and climb up on it? Or did you do the crazy hard optional super boss level? Because that's why they taught me about pressing B to grab onto this. That's mean. Very un Mario. I need to. Pull off his arms first for this to be reasonable. Oh, but they can't be flat and they can grab them. It helped you catch the ones you missed, that's usually good. You get to the end of the game. To, like pay someone to tell you where they were. Oh, 
the ground wall and flat. Let's say that was a cool boss, but I am not done. There's no way to, like, track down the individual blue coins you miss, unless if you're playing the whole game with a blue coins guide. I guess if they were all the red um, graffiti, that might help a little bit, but sometimes you just get them in a random box and stuff, right? Is there even a, uh, like, a ghost coin for one that you already got? I guess I see why they kick you out of the level, because sometimes like the actual layout of the level changes based on which shine you're trying to get, right? Mario Odyssey didn't really solve for that. to say is that it takes time. I don't even know if it does, it's a good point. I think the problem though is that like you can't like work on getting the 100 coin star in Mario 64. Most of the time, unless if you're dedicating an entire attempt to getting it, because it's going to kick you out if you get another star in the way. Big Daddy of Blooper Serving. Big Daddy waves all liability for accidents. Hey, it's like uh, Koopa Shell Surfing. Using, like that's a blue coin that's only available on this particular shine substage. Wanna go for a ride? Oh, I remember this song. Show me some super blooper surfing and win yourself a prize. Well, I thought it was gonna funnel me onto it. Mario 64, but with a camera stick. Oh my goodness. Too bad. This doesn't treat that as a death, does it? It's interesting that this game even still has lives. I guess Mario Odyssey does, but it makes a joke out of it. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow, it is killing me. Dang. Good riddance to lives. One of my terrors in gaming, so the one is the 
alchemy pot in Dragon Quest VIII that I keep a copy of every item I get in case they add a late game crafting system where I need them. Another one is the mini game that has a reward for beating your record. Or even a chain of rewards for beating your record such that it incentivizes you to do really poorly on your first run, right? God. Can I just walk into it next time? I think the number, like the alchemy pot problem, the number of games I've run into that have that is very low, and I don't even think I can name any if I sit and think about it. But I know I've played some games where it's like, okay, you get a reward the first time you clear it, and then you get a reward when you beat your previous record, and you get another reward when you beat that record. So if you're almost flawless on your first attempt, you are fucked. Oh my god, I'm really struggling with that turn there. Sploosh Kaboom and Wind Waker does that? Hmm. I'm gonna practice that turn some more, apparently. Practice that a little bit more. And it's luck based. The, the ultimate nightmare is that it works the way I described, and the reward is unique and only obtainable from that minigame. A unique, missable reward. I guess there's a variant of the same thing where, like, uh, oh, it didn't. So I guess I didn't save after I picked it up. Like, you get rewards for completing the minigame, but you have to unlock those rewards in ascending order. So, like, playing perfectly, you, if you play perfectly on your first attempt, but you didn't unlock the reward for bronze, silver, gold, and platinum, you would unlock the bronze reward and then have to start again and then get silver, right? I think the dreaded Chocobo game in Final Fantasy X might work that way, but it's been a while. I just walk into it. I might actually be struggling with this because I'm fucking with the camera. I should just trust what the camera is doing for me. Yeah, that's better. Leave the sea stick alone. Running a side mission to get the money you need for the end game. Oh no. The owners now have an app to calibrate their sploosh kaboom RNG seed. Based on hitting the first X squares and attempt to find out where in the game's PRNG table you are. That's great. Is that a thing where they only just recently discovered that it was knowable? And for the longest time they thought it was just pure RNG? the long jump. It's my favorite thing to do in Mario. Just walk through everywhere. Well, it wasn't clear that there was a way to discover the seed though, right?
Mm, you have to get there at a certain time. Interesting. Is the RNG seated by your timestamp or something? Plans are the filthiest thing that we can use for these level unlocking sequences. I think it's just that they're stationary. Advances every frame. Thanks, Mario. You're welcome. How do I feel about the news alerts in this game? Advance by a bunch of things, but below a certain timestamp, they can have an upper bound on how many times it has advanced. Gotcha. That's cool. I'm very happy that speedrunning exists. It's not something that I would ever do myself, but it's just so cool that there's all of this value that's hidden in video games that generally was never intended by the creators. I guess limited challenge runs occupy a similar space, like um, Swamp Wedex and RuneScape. Restricting himself to a single area, it completely changes what is and isn't relevant in the game when you do that. One of my nozzles, you can't use it yet, it's only a hologram. Okay. Oh, this, this enemy that no one ever fights and no one knows what its drop table is has a 1 in 250 chance of dropping a plank that's otherwise completely inaccessible in this region that I'm locked to. So, this enemy no one cares about in the game, it was a throwaway drop table for the developers. Turns out it's super fucking important. I love that stuff. Oh, that's weird. Hmm. I love speedrun routing. I think I like routing more than like the actual act of speedrunning. Such a cool concept to me. It's like, what is? Oh, this is really cool looking. This still looks good, but this looks insane for 2002. It's a lot of lamp bumping showing off in this game, huh? I feel like games don't do this too much anymore. I deliberately add things just to show off tech. And that's basically how Pixar works, right? Like their entire reason for doing a movie is they want to show off their new fur tech or reflections or whatever. And then they get really cool movies as a result. Celeste speedruns are hand murder, you know. I've done enough like in-game mini games that are a similar experience loop to speedrunning to know that it isn't something that I would enjoy to do. To me, deciding to speedrun is basically the dreaded Chocobo minigame from Final Fantasy X. It's like, you need the RNG to work, and you need to play perfectly, and anytime you make a mistake, you may as well restart. Style running. That'd be cool. I think you could have more games that officially uh, support restricted runs, like no sphere grid, no drawing. 
Like, the main reason I don't mess around with those is that it's... When the game doesn't acknowledge that you're restricting yourself, it's harder for me to care. Like, I could maybe make myself care if I restricted myself and then, like, streamed it, because then I'd have accountability in the form of viewers watching me, right? But all which are mistakes. I think that if you had more games that officially supported those sorts of restrictions, it would lead the developers to try to make the games completable with restrictions, which I think can be interesting. Like, I think it's just sort of wild that, you know, you can beat Final Fantasy X No Sphere Grid. I think there's a category of 10 where the entire game is beatable except Braska's Final Aeon. It's like No Sphere Grid, No Mix, No Aeon, something ridiculous. You can get all the way to the end of the game, and then you just can't beat the final boss. Unless it, things have changed in 15 years. Do Mario Odyssey without the jump button. So like the minimal A-press Mario 64 run. You have to have a basic understanding of parallel universes before you attempt it. Oh god, what does that stand for, Aki? Okay, I guess maybe I can do more with these later on. Maybe my max height from them is actually higher than I thought it was. Okay, that's cool to know. Maybe I can get up to that blue coin if I can jump that high. There's a blue coin below me there. No sphere grid, no summons, no customization, no escape, no no encounters, no blitz ball. No overdrive. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, the fact that that's possible in the system of Final Fantasy X is not in any way intended by the devs. I guess that part of the issue, it's like, I think that's part of what makes that magical, is that it wasn't on purpose. And if devs started making it on purpose, maybe it's less cool then. Is anyone out there in the Surf Cabana? Oh, jeez. Why would you put this horrible thing up here? Thirteen no Crystarium was walled on one boss for a while. Yeah. I think it would be cool to see more devs support randomizers. In-game speedrunning and, uh, restrictions. I guess they could also allow you to apply restrictions without ever doing the testing to see if it's possible. <laughs> Just have to not associate achievements with them or anything like that. A juicer on the roof. It's a strong, uh... Oh... Just say this little puzzle has strong Banjo Kazooie energy. Whoa, that's cool. Oh, these, that's right. Oh my god, I have. I remember almost nothing from this game, but for some reason, a level like this that's in the shape of. NES Luigi is burned into my brain, and that's probably a bad thing. I like that these are in the game. No flood. Oh. 
Oh god! Mario, no! You fool! It's stuck on something. This is a mistake, but that's okay. It'd be nice if you could still long jump in here, right? Mm -hmm. Don't have to worry about challenges and not use the skies as players will figure it out. That's how I design dungeon challenges in D and D. I'll try to come up with. I'll, I'll make a puzzle with an intended solution, and then I'll try to think of two other ways that I could solve it. And if I can't come up with two other ways, I'll like add in two other ways to do it. And then the players almost never land on any of the three solutions that I came up with, which is most of the fun. Whoa, whoa, calm down game. Why are you doing that? Alright, I might need to figure out why that's happening. That's not cool. Oh, it's still happening. Jeez. Oh, you can only use a certain amount of flood for the entire stage. Got it, I was continuing to make decisions assuming that that was still available to me. What is causing that? That's so weird. Looks like it's trying to be widescreen? Like, I don't even know how it could know to try to do that, right? This is fine. So how does the flood hover work? It's like, it can be used for a certain number of seconds so long as you're in the air and it resets when you touch the ground, Celeste style? Maybe. That's really weird. I have the black bars on the left and right of the screen hidden, but uh... It's basically making this game go full screen for like a frame. There's a false perspective thing that's happening. I'll just try to avoid those levels for the rest of this episode, but next episode I'm going to have to figure out how to solve for that problem. So much less satisfying than a long jump. Why are you on fire, friend? And they ask the question, what can you do with the flood? What kind of objectives can we give you? Put out somebody that's on fire? Put out a building that's on fire? Fill a bottle? jump out of the slide. Oh wow, that goes for a while. Interesting. Thought you had to like chain it. And that's the best form of locomotion in the game. Mirror Madness, Tilt Slam Bam. 
Gascon. Look at the top of the tower. I see, we saw those mirrors focus differently earlier. Endangered the legendary sandbird egg. Oh, that's just to let you revert to the basic nozzle. Okay, makes sense. I'm guessing it also refills your water. Now is your chance. Ah, that's cool. Nice. Talked about this before, but it's a true that almost all mirrors in video games are cheated in. They do some kind of shenanigan to like calculate what they're pointing at and then render that again, but flipped. I guess if you wanted to do a physics simulation of a mirror, you would you would melt a computer. The new Fermark. Let's model every photon. That's great. Oh, they got the little suction cup feet too. This is a cool challenge. actual mirror shader. The way your craft learning works is how it is in real life. Camera tricks raise the objects to get reflected back based on geometry and light directions. I thought doing that was extremely expensive and if you don't have tons of mirrors in your game, you are better off uh, doing a one-time double render, basically. Especially if you had a... Uh, fixed camera angle in a game with uh, 300 backgrounds, like Resident Evil. good enough for a long time. Project where the camera would be in mirror space and render those pixels from the mirrors if they're from a camera located there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, like you couldn't have like 10 dishes around this tower without the frame rate tanking probably. 
Or at least not be in a situation where you can see all of them at the same time. Pretty good, actually. I don't think I ever knew about that as a kid. It was like a form of general locomotion. I have a duplicate of the player character walking on the other side and cropped out. Yeah, the long jump makes sense, and it's something you might do by accident. Play flop on damp concrete and cly on it forever. Wiggler Ahoy, full steam ahead. Oh, he's angry from the previous one, that's cool. Protect the dune bud, you'll see. I see. goes over this one, I see. friends. Like, nope. Tear the bloopers tentacles off. These are not your friends. That's super interesting, Yuko. Spray water on sand and then belly flop onto it. Mario's the real Kind of cool that they give you a bunch of levels early on. Like you get unlocks after just doing one or two shines in them. Now you have way more choices. Oh, it's an egg they talked about. It's 
What's up? Sandbird finally hatched. Flew away right away. Sand Cabana closed today. It's definitely what that says. What if there was this professor, EGAD? Is he the same guy that made Luigi's uh, vacuum cleaner? That'd be a nice touch if true. That's cool. When did the original Luigi's Mansion come out? I've never played those games. First party Nintendo black hole for me. There's an actual character in them. title. So EGAD making the flood in this is a reference to Luigi's Mansion. Oh my god, it's... Uh... Mario. Sorry, I can talk. Shadow of the Colossus. best colossi in that game. <laughs> wow, I do not deserve to be alive. I'm gonna get this one last because it can flip you off. Oh god. Well, things are looking good and deleted that. Jump slightly, got it. Bad cloud. Last one like on his underside or something. Legendary Sandbird might be kind of a dick. Guess you could hang out on its side there. That's what you're supposed to do, and maybe the last one's up at the top of the tower. Okay. Well, now I know what to do. Third time's a charm. Stuff like this sandbird that I do not remember at all. In the slightest.
Oh god, I had... we were fine. Everything was fine, game! Why would you do that? I bumped my head in a cloud. Jeez. So there's some point where you need to like start over. You gain speed and then you like speed drops off. Oh my god. The video you're watching is a it's pre-rendered. You can see the back thing. That's crazy. Again. All right, wrong kind. Is there an easy early place to farm for uh, lives in this game? sewers. Let's just ground pound on the manhole, basically. Right. Getting back into the stage usually isn't that big of a deal. Oh my god, what is even happening? Okay, apparently don't go for the tail one first. Spawns. Just being on the tail is destabilizing, okay. Mario, I swear to God, buddy. <laughs> gonna be here for a while. challenges of a respawning one up, that makes sense. I think that one just gets deposited on the bird regardless of how much of the stage I've completed at that point. Maybe the bird shrugs it off eventually. Oh weird, that time it didn't. Oh, that means I gotta succeed this time. Definitely not getting these blue coins. <laughs> that would be a nightmare. 
pretty sure I 100 percent of this when I was a kid. I was still a pretty rabid completionist when this game came out. There it is. First try. Yikes. Enough for a new stage? About to find out. Well, that's a thing, okay. turn and say, what? That is Pina Island. The villain's secret hideout must be there. That's convenient. There is that cannon there. Mecha Bowser appears. I think I remember the final boss of this game, or at least a late game boss. I remember it would be pretty cool. Where you're just like, wait, what? How'd this happen? You get like a super mushroom or something? Has this always been the cannon? Most of the enemies in this are new, aren't they? What's up? Hello there. Wonderful sound. Painting back there. So, looking for an amusement park. Gates over there on the other side of the beach. Yeah, that's cool. have tech for gaining infinite height in this game. Oh god. Oh, that was rude. There's a bug where the sand cream is gonna fling you a mile into the air and you can see the whole island. Oh, 
like unnecessarily epic for Shadow Mario. What epic did the perpetrator get away? That fire effect. <laughs> what a spectacle! Is this a new show of ours? You guys are great. Whoever hired you needs a raise. Oh, I just got that weird flickering thing again. The hero's vehicle. Let's see if the whole boss is gonna use that. I don't want to keep playing if it's gonna keep doing that. This looks fine right now. Push from behind. This is pretty cool. Is it like a rail shooter? question. Is that too high, apparently? the big reveal. I think this power might get referenced in like Smash Brothers or something. It's alarming. Clarified how Bowser Jr. fits into the Koopa Kids. My head canon is that Boom Boom in Mario 3 is Bowser Jr. To the extent that Mario canon matters at all, right? And he succeeded. And now he came to steal Mama Peach again. You, you pest, stop following us. Really? Let me use vacuum foot on the brush or all that you can. Heading toward 
Arona Mountain. Arona Mountain? I guess I just assumed that the Koopa kids were Koopa's kids. Because Bowser's name is Koopa in Japan, right? Still got to figure out what the deal is with that flicker. That's so strange. Secret. Uh, the Monty Mole. Oh, it's, that's what's shaking the screen. Okay. That's how I get these. Hey, I was correct. It's the Demon King. Great Demon King. Is homing or something? It does file purple homing ones, I thought. Seven Koopas. I always heard them referred to as the Koopa Kids. Interesting. pick stuff up. Sometimes it makes you want to dash into them. So I wish that had its own button.
Oh no, it's happening again. All right, well, I'll definitely research and try to fix that for next episode. Looks like it's fine after the little intro sequence. Oh, shit. I'm maybe my last life anyway. Oh, yeah, one more try. Love when zero lives counts. GameCube controller has A, B, X, Y, R1, R2, L1, no L2. C stick, which I guess you couldn't push in either analog stick. I guess those are two additional inputs. And no select button, right? Yeah, so R1, R2, but no L1, so I'm saying. Some third party controllers had an N button that you could like assign to be something else, I guess. R1, this is the Z button, you get this weird guide. I feel like that could be handled with the start button. And then R1 could be use item. Grab thing in front of you and pull it. It was kind of interesting to see video games transition to making, putting really major actions on the, uh, the shoulder buttons. First major game to put the shoot button on R1. Red coins of the pirate ships. Bowser Jr. is not a member of the Coop Kids. Sometimes acts as their leader. Bowser Jr. is Bowser's only child. Red coins of the pirate ships. Okay. Best you can as a single dad. That makes sense. Is asexually. So in Mario 64, there's a lot of stars that you can get out of order without having to load in. Um, 
Is that true in this one, or is almost every shine unique to the subversion of the stage? If that makes sense. Exists except 100 coins. Okay. You guys are basically Goombas. You can't trick me otherwise. That's what we need. We need to have a new Mario Party game where these guys are the Goomba, then it all takes place on Delfino Plaza. Oh my god, that is still happening. What the heck? It's so weird. Just can't conceive of what would cause that. I wonder if that's like a Mario Sunshine specific problem or if it's a. Uh... Dolphin problem. I need the chapter seven chimes. I can't skip ahead. I see. How long is the any percent run? Is this one of the longer any percent runs in gaming? Then? This rides under maintenance. Camera, I believe in you. It's a weak ride. Interesting. Do you have to like get there quickly or something? Seventy-four minutes. Guess that's not that long. Best way to get back up there is probably an intended way. Maybe it's these things. intended way to get up there, because that could work, but it's not the way I'm supposed to do it. Also, why does that keep happening? Let me try getting out of here and going to a different stage. Might be an issue at this level. So I'm going to take the time to research that for next episode. Game flickers widescreen occasionally for no apparent reason.
Yeah, that's a helpful comparison. Side cave secrets. Your friend thinks a bundle. No reward. All right. It was part of the expense of uh, making this map feel like a real place, as opposed to a video game level, as they have to put little arrow signs everywhere. I think of games I've played where the level design feels invisible. They do a really good job of making a place look like it's a real place, but actually it's a traversable level that's meant to be experienced in a certain order. Half-Life 2, I guess, does a really good job of that. It's not always clear that this is here to be a platform for you. Seems to really just like cutscenes for some reason. It's happening again in the middle of the stage. It's not cool. Maybe it's doing some kind of perspective shenanigan. It's a gecko code to fix it. Okay. Thanks for checking. Yeah, the wiki had some gecko codes listed, but they were all for enhancements like uh, 60 FPS. I didn't see anything that was like, you need to use this for the game to not have any problems. Ghost of Tsushima does it well? That's cool. Let me see what's in the sewers here. There's a hundred coin shrine for the uh, overworld as well. We're gonna wait till the very end of the game to get that one. Not remember that the sewers was like this. I thought it was at a separate stage. I thought that was just like if you choose to use a widescreen hack, this will fix the widescreen hack. Not if you're playing in the native resolution, it's not going to make it flicker like that. Because so I saw that there were widescreen hack options and I was like, eh, try to play it and it's 4.3 original. I think that uh, Dolphin natively offers a widescreen hack for all GameCube games, maybe. But it's that kind of ugly stretch thing that they do with the PS3 widescreen. 
not one to one. Totally possible. Okay, cool. Camera's super janky for it, though. I don't understand what causes you to grip the wall when you're doing that side flip. there now. Probably need a nozzle upgrade to get to it. Yeah. Just trying to do content that avoids that widescreen flickering problem. Try this one some more. Shine sprays. Does it stay unlocked? Do I not have to spray off the front of it anymore? Hey then. you have so much water that it's like practically infinite but I guess them setting it on an island means that it's pretty easy to refill if it does run out I need you to chill out Ben you're going crazy I still have the problem where in 3D platformers it's hard to have enemies that you have to jump on to kill. Because aiming your jumps is so imprecise. Ended up being very wise to give Mario a punch, I think. Can't spray them off this wall. Jeez. I guess I was supposed to learn about how that hook worked on the boat. Guessing you just jump at it. Okay, it's a okay. button. 
Any particular reason the uh, any percent run needs the seventh shine from every stage? Does they unlock something special when you get them or something? Some funneling when you jump onto this thing. Yeah, it looks like it. Sounds like it does a pretty good job of having level design that feels like a natural area, but uh, is actually set up to be a level that you're supposed to traverse, right? In comparison to something like Half-Life 2 that also does that. Or like, this is a believable space that I'm in, but also it's a video game level, and it wants me to go through it in this specific way. Oh, it's a Shadow Mario Chase and Trigger Story events. Interesting. I didn't realize the base game required you to do that many shines in each stage. It's kind of crazy. about this. This is a hell of a shine here. You fall once. Sad news bears. Is there a spider on this thing? Not on this part. Only ends up being 50. I'll make this uh There's that almost but not quite infinite's about to come into play. Still don't have this unlocked, right? Oh wait, there we go. Rocket nozzle. Last time. So I don't think I want this. I want my old nozzle back. Now that I realize it's not necessary for progression. Oh god. I'm gonna get to the very top and fall. I've had the vision already. Oh god, not what I meant to do. Thank god. Whew. I'm on a heart rate monitor for that shit. No way to like cheese yourself into one of the later levels. Oh, I see. It's basically a shortcut if you make it halfway. I didn't think about that. Hey, Ben. Let's keep doing this stage. Secret of Rico Tower. Wow. 
cheese for me, apparently. Yeah, I'm super confused on the wall jump in this game. Sometimes you, like, bounce off the wall in such a way that you can start pressing a button to wall jump or something. This might be one of those levels with a, yeah, all right. Try to skip the cutscene, at least that'll help a little bit. In addition to the widescreen bug being annoying looking on stream, it makes these really hard to do. <laughs> You have to start sliding down the wall. Maybe that's it. So like you hit the wall too early, it won't work basically. This here is a 3D platformer nightmare. There we go. wants to stay on these platforms. What? That's the limit though. You won't stand on the bottom of them. This game doesn't make you slip slide everywhere, which is nice. You guys should just trust the camera. It's exact rotating blocks are in hat in time. Nice. Did not realize these were moving before, left to right. Do not deserve to be alive, but I'll take it. Died in the same spot. Still doing that flicker occasionally on the stage. Doesn't seem to correlate with anything. It's not like with a button press or with a camera facing a certain way. Remember this the Luigi one that I'm talking about? The stage is shaped like Luigi, you have to get all these coins or something. And every time you step on a platform, it gets destroyed. Oh, is it Mario Galaxy? I could have sworn there was one in this one that was like that. Feel like you press jump, but the game didn't feel like you pressed jump. <laughs> Possible that like I fell slightly, and because I was technically already in the air, it didn't let me jump. Getting the game feel right on these has to be really hard. Like, so far, whenever I've died, it's felt like it was my fault. 
It can't just be rock physics, right? You gotta do some shenanigan to adhere Mario to the blocks. I could definitely see an amateurish 3D platformer where this level is completely miserable instead of just challenging. Mario Galaxy Energy. Long jump. First try. Nice. Yahoo! Indeed, Mario. I still feel like there was a super hard one in this game in a level that was shaped like Luigi. I want to say it was one of the last things I did, but it might, it might be Mario Galaxy. Am I right? I wanted to say that they're in both games. But... Cooper Blooper returns. Now he can knock you off. Cool. That's always fun. It looks like the changes to the stage are progressive in this game, more or less. Like. Every time the stage changes, the changes stick around for the next iteration. Next shine. The scaffolding stage. Maybe that's only for this level in particular. It works that way. I need to get a better feel for how long that lasts. I don't have it right now. That's exactly the problem. Alright. It's not too bad to get back up there though. I thought it was gonna be a much bigger hassle. Thanks, Flood. Is that so? Andrea level advice. Telling me that I had to jump on them while it was spinning. So you have to press neutral B, basically. And you want to use B as a grab and not as a dash off the stage button.
got you. Such violence. I think I was playing a collectathon platformer recently where you don't murder all of the cute monsters. You just beat them up and then you, they apologize. You murder some stuff in Banjo Kazooie. The pain sounds are real, I know, right? Save and quit. Button I would never use as a child. What? Quit. Talking about. Just turn the game off. Thanks, folks, for hanging out. Uh, Mario Sunshine will be back next week. Let you guys know what's coming up here.